Hi, and welcome to 5 Minute Physics. This video is about induced potential or the generator effect, as you've probably heard it called before. You should remember that around a magnet, there's an area we call a magnetic field, and that's marked out by magnetic field lines, or properly, they're called flux lines. So try and use that term if you can. You notice that the flux lines have arrows on them, and these always point from north to south. So if you're ever asked to sketch the field around a magnet, make sure you include these arrows. If you get a conductor like a wire and you move it through the magnetic field so it cuts through the flux lines, then something very, very useful happens. Electrons in the wire all get pushed to one end. And that makes one end of the wire positive and one end negative. So if you put together a magnetic field, movement or motion, and a conductor, then a potential difference gets induced in the wire in the conductor. Do try to use the word induced in an exam if you can remember. It's often a way of picking up an extra mark. Quite a common exam question is how would you increase the potential difference? And the key to it is fairly straightforward. There's three things you can do. And you can see all of them in this animation here. Firstly, you can increase the strength of the magnetic field. Now you might remember that on a diagram of a magnetic field, the more flux lines you can see and the closer together those flux lines are, the stronger the field. So increasing the field will increase the PD. If you have more wire, and the easiest way to do that is to coil it up into a loop or a solenoid, we call it, um, then it also increases the potential difference. There's more conductor inside the magnetic field. And the third way is just to move the conductor faster through the field. So any three of those, or all three of those, will give you a bigger potential difference. More will be induced. They can also ask you how you'd reverse the potential difference. How you'd make the opposite end of the conductor positive. And the way to do that is, again, pretty straightforward, to be honest. Either you reverse the magnetic field, so you basically turn the magnet around, or you move the conductor the opposite way through the fields. And either of those will reverse the potential difference. If you do both at the same time, though, the two effects cancel each other out, and the potential difference stays the same way around. So you can only change one at a time. If you think about a battery or a cell, that's just a source of PD as well. And until you connect it to a complete circuit, then no current flows. Once we have a circuit, then current is going to flow from positive around to negative. And the size of that current, hopefully you remember, depends on the size of the potential difference and the resistance of the circuit. A wire or a coil of wire that's got a PD induced in it behaves in exactly the same way. If it's part of a complete circuit, then we get current flowing. If it's not, nothing happens. So if we connect the two ends together, then current can flow from positive to negative. So, to summarise, if we move a conductor through a magnetic field, then a potential difference is induced across that conductor. That potential difference is going to be proportional to the magnetic field strength, the wire length, and the speed of movement. If you increase any of those things, you get a bigger potential difference. If you move the wire the opposite way, or you turn the magnet around so the magnetic field's reversed, then the potential difference is reversed as well. A current is only going to flow if that conductor is part of a complete circuit. Otherwise, you have a potential difference, but no current flowing. Thanks for watching this 5-minute physics video. Please check out our other videos explaining GCSE physics in simple 5-minute lessons, or subscribe to us on YouTube. Bye!